teenagers to the first annual <coughs> religious education graduation ceremony. This is an event where we celebrate you moving on from youth group. Those of you who have been around, those of you who have been around for a while, you know that this is an event to celebrate those who have been confirmed and have become adults in the church. So those of you who have been, who have been confirmed, we celebrate you today. And those of you who haven't been confirmed yet, well. We're just going to kind of usher you along today and graduate you anyways. So we're just going to move you along. You will leave here a confirmed Catholic and an adult in the Catholic faith. Let's commemorate this event with a picture. Hang on just a second. Okay, everybody squish in. Can you take a picture of the ball? Okay, ready, everybody? <laughs> Sorry about that, we've had some budget cutbacks. But don't worry about it, you'll get your copies on social media, I'll post those later today. In order to commemorate this special day, I have invited a speaker who is truly inspirational to lead you and to guide you as you move forward from youth group. Please join me in welcoming Richard DeAnda. Oh. Please join me in welcoming Richard DeAnda. It's so wonderful to be here today. I just want to say some words of encouragement. So, you know, now that you're adults in the church, you've earned this, and it's an honor and a distinction, so just remember that. <laughs> After years of attending mass and religious education classes and youth group and service projects, and it's all behind you now. Now you need to think about more important things like college, dating, video games, relaxing, and make sure to take some time for yourself. So with that in mind, I want to share some encouraging words with you. has been fun, and I will never forget any of you. <laughs> it is time for us to go out into the world, be our own people, and live. <coughs> I remember the time when Richard was supposed to give a speech, and he was going up, and he tripped and fell, <laughs> and anything that was standing went down with him. Didn't matter which side of the stage it was on. <laughs> We worked so hard and now it is time to enjoy life. <coughs> the days of retreats, service projects, and Bibles are over. Now we move on to college classes, careers, and massive student debt. <laughs> I will miss you, but I look forward to seeing you at reunions on Christmas and Easter. Do great things. <laughs> Arthur. I think that I'll be there on those reunions on Christmas and Easter as well. We do have 
one more class speaker today. Please join me in welcoming Shannon Lanefield. Yeah. Tonight we're talking about the sacrament of confirmation and the mission of the church. More the mission of the church. But first I want to go over uh, the sacrament of confirmation really quickly. Now most of you, uh, but I know not all of you, have either been confirmed through our program, are going through confirmation in our program, uh, have been confirmed through some other program, or may or may not be testing out the church. So there's, everybody's at a different level. Uh, if you do decide to go through confirmation, or you have gone through confirmation, you've been given the huge, detailed version of confirmation. I just want to kind of cover it on a surface level so that we can know where we're talking about. So, the sacrament of confirmation is the completion of the sacrament of our baptism. It's also what's known as the completing rite of initiation into the church. There are three rites of initiation. First is baptism, the second is the Eucharist, and the third is confirmation. Uh, in baptism, we are actually adopted into the family of God. Uh, our adoption comes in and we begin our journey. In confirmation, our baptism is concluded, basically. Uh, the Catechism of the Catholic Church uh, defines it as... For by the sacrament of confirmation, the baptized are more perfectly bound to the church and are enriched with the special strength of the Holy Spirit. Hence, they are, as true witnesses of Christ, more strictly obliged to spread and defend the faith by word and deed. And that's our mission. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that. But we are sealed. We are sealed in oil. We are sealed in the Holy Spirit. And we are fully initiated in the church, and we are given our mission, and we are sent out to save the world. And how do we do that? Well, hard truth is that I am a sinner. I have a fallen nature. I live in a fallen world. Without the sacrifice of Christ on the cross... Heaven is denied me. Another way to say that is my only hope is to go to hell. That's it. Without Christ crucified, I don't get in. And neither does anybody else here. Fortunately, for us, Christ came down. And not only did he pay the penance, pay the price for the sins, the, the price that we could not pay. But he also taught us how to live. He built a church through the apostles. 
And it is through that church that we gain the access to heaven. Because Christ has opened the door. His sacrifice on the cross opened the door, but that doesn't mean that we're in heaven yet. We still have to walk through that door. And walking through that door is extremely simple. The mission of the church is very simple. Repent of your sin, or actually reject all sin, reject Satan, repent of your current sin, and then pass along what you have learned. That's a very simple mission, but it's also very difficult to live out. And the reason it's difficult for us to live out is because we are sinners. We have a fallen nature, and we live in a fallen world. And how did that all happen? Well, for probably the fourth or the fifth week in a row, I'm going to take you back to Adam and Eve in the fall in a garden. I'm not going to cover it. We've, we've gone into the story in very detailed over the last few weeks. But the two things that happened when Adam and Eve sinned were, one, they were thrown out of the garden. And they were condemned to die. We inherited that. The second thing that happened was our nature changed. And at the beginning, when God created Adam, he breathed the spirit into him, which brought him to life. And then that spirit was passed on to Eve when Eve was created. Well, when they sinned, all that was divine in that spirit separated from them. And our spirit became weakened. Suddenly, our will became stronger than what God's will was. And we were no longer living in perfect, uh, obedient relationship to him. Now in our state, in the world, with that bro we inherit that broken and that weakened spirit. And like Father said in the video, without the Holy Spirit to strengthen us, to carry out our mission, to reject sin and reject Satan, sin is tempting. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that um, a little bit later on. But sin, to reject Satan and to reject sin and to fight against our temptations, and the mission, as, as the Catechism told us again, we are obliged to spread and defend the faith by word and deed. Remember what I told you at the beginning. Sinner, fallen nature, fallen world. Christ crucified. It's my only hope to get to heaven. I need to figure out how to live that life. More importantly, I need to know that that path exists. If we are not on a mission, if we're not spreading that word out to the world, then people who haven't heard it don't know it, can't take advantage of it. And I hear this all the time. Different people are like, well, the priests do that. Or, that's not really my job. That's, that's other people's jobs. It's not. If we're not on our mission, if we're not doing what we need to be doing, the church doesn't perpetuate. Now, does that mean everybody's going to convert and become Catholic? No. Does that mean that everybody who does get confirmed is going to live a faithful and holy life. No. Sadly, it doesn't. Sometimes they don't want to. Sometimes they don't fully understand. Sometimes there is a hurt or there's a pain in their way. Your mission is the same. And it doesn't have to. I mean, it could be a far-fetched mission where you, like the apostles, you go to a different country and... You minister to people you've never met before, and maybe you come home and maybe you don't. Odds are, though, your mission is to evangelize in your schools, maybe in your families with people who don't come. Do you have parents who don't come to Mass anymore? Do you have brothers and sisters who don't come to Mass anymore? Your mission is to put that out there, because if they don't return, if they don't find their way back to Christ crucified, they're lost. And for a lot of people, we're the only ones they're ever going to see, they're ever going to hear the mission from. But we 
can't do our mission on our own. And that's why we need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit strengthens us. I told you where we were weakened. Have you ever thought about the, the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit? Go back and look at it. What are the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit? They, those are the places that the Spirit strengthens us because we're weakened there. You need the Spirit. The Spirit will help you pray. The Spirit will help you learn. The Spirit will help you strengthen. And then you can do your mission. 